be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, I know that I was for spent. I ask you for your attention and your prayers for just a few moments. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of Jesus Christ recorded by John. To the ministers on the roster, to the officers of this church, to you, my father's children. John chapter 9. When you have it, say amen. John chapter 9. I want to read two different verses, which will serve as basis for our message today. John chapter 9, meet me at verse number 17. From the New International Version, you'll hear these words go something like this. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? Wow, wow, wow. Wow, I just saw something. I'm, I'm, what have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. Fast forward to verse 25. Verse 25 says, he replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I do know, I was blind. Now I see. I want to preach about when you see something, say something. Thank you. You may be seated. When you see something, say something. Thank you, ushers. You may be seated. Man should not live by bread alone, but by word, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We live in a talkative world. This world likes to talk. There are many people around us, including we ourselves, who have the gift of gab, whether it be over the phone, via email, social media, and for some, through mail correspondence. Everybody, just about everybody, likes to have conversations. I've discovered, my brothers and sisters, that the repugnance of our articulation often results in being loud about what we should be silent about, and then being silent about what we should be loud about. We major in minor, and then we minor in major. For some, for, for the fellows, it's what you call barbershop talk. For the sisters, y'all label it as spilling tea. Regardless as to what you call it, it's conversation. And I've discovered that when it comes to the work of God in your life, some people now have imposed upon themselves the Miranda rights, where they think they have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can and will be used against you. But when the Lord has done something for you, that's not the time to be quiet. But while you're sharing the work of God in your life, let me just give you my warning. Everybody will not reciprocate your enthusiasm. Some people will not be happy because of what God is doing to you, through you, and for you. Don't look down your road, but there may be some folk. You can talk about anything else except the goodness of the Lord. 
and you'll discover what their conversations are about. Brothers and sisters, the marvelous work of the master will require you to present a public response. We see that in the passage, my brothers and sisters. In John chapter nine, it is a continuation of what theologians call the seven signs of Jesus. They are from John chapter number one to John chapter number 12. This particular sign is the sixth sign. It is the miracle of a blind man. As a matter of fact, theologians say that John is the only one who gives detail about this particular miracle. But it is not per se the miracle that is the importance of today's message. It is actually the backside or the afterthought of what happens after the miracle. Because once the miracle happens, then the man has a responsibility to share with others what the Lord has done for him. And you do know our theme for this year is seeing God and showing God. But you can't show a God that you've never seen. This man has seen the Lord work in a wonderful way. And as a consequence of seeing him, he now has the, the assignment and yet the burden of sharing with other people what the Lord has done for him. As we peruse John chapter 9 in its entirety, we're going to find some help for hence for holy habitation as we allow the text to talk to us about seeing something and saying something. Come with me now to verse number one, if you would, because there are some things we discover that we should speak about. Number one, we should speak about a personal work. Say that with me, a personal work. Where are you, Pastor? I'm in verses one through eight because uh, chapter verse number one is a continuation of chapter number eight when Jesus just happens to slide by his enemies in the temple who are trying to kill him. And while he's slipping away from his enemies, the Bible says, notice the text, that he comes up on a blind man. We'll find out later in the passage that this is not just any man, he's a beggar, he's panhandling. But in the text, it does not say that the blind man came looking for Jesus. The text says that Jesus just happened up on him, which means that sometimes you don't have to incite your own miracle. Some Time the Lord can show up right where you are. The word says he was born blind. It, it, he was, it was not bombarded upon him. It just happened when he came from his mother's womb. And when Jesus sees this blind man, some things happen to him that we need to speak about. Number one, we need to speak about the purpose of the work. For the, the disciples look at the blind man and said to the Lord, Lord, who sinned, this man or his parents? Because the Jews taught you that sickness was a consequence of sin but you and I can testify that you don't have to live in sin in order to suffer if I could call Job to the, to the stand you can be righteous and still be a candidate for chaos you can go to church every Sunday pay your tithes and offerings go to Sunday school not bother anybody stay to yourself and still trouble will find your address Jesus said, no, neither this man sinned nor his parents sinned. But here's the purpose of the work, that the glory of the Lord may be revealed. You just missed your shout cue. Why in the world is this drama happening to me? Why in the world is my life going topsy-turvy? Why in the world are all the problems? It's just the, 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 the 12th day of January. We hadn't even gotten into the middle of the year and now anything that can go wrong has happened to go wrong. Lord, what's really going on? And Jesus just answered all your questions in this one verse. Here it is again. So that the work, so that the glory of God could be made manifest in your life. I see you got wax in your right ear. Shift it. Let me try it again. The reason why things are happening 
happening in your life that you did not ask for is because God is going to get the glory in your life. And some of us shout off the song that there will be glory after this. No, there won't be glory after this. There's going to be some glory in this. That's why Paul said, not after everything, but in everything, give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God is going to use your sickness. God is going to use your divorce. God is going to use your unemployment. God is going to use your children acting crazy. God is going to use in everything that you're going through in your life to get the glory out of it. And that's why the devil does not want you to have a praise on your lips. He does not want you to have a worship in your heart because you have, if you make up in your mind that you're going to bless your God in the midst of it, it's going to upset the very gates of hell. Go on, preach, pastor. If you ever decide to take a praise break in the midst of your hell, it's going to confuse the enemy. And I wish I had 18 of us in here who know you going through hell right now just to say, you know what? The hell going to still be there. But I'm going to bless God even if I don't feel like it. The process is to give God glory. The purpose is to give God glory, but watch the process. The process is Jesus takes some mud uh, and he mixes it with his spit. Now for those of you who understand the miracles of Jesus, sometimes Jesus does not have to use human touch. Sometimes he just speaks the word. But in this instance, he uses this spit and this mud as a point of contact. Not only does he use it as a point of contact, but he also uses it for medicinal purposes. Because you do understand that although this was a Sabbath day, there's something about the saliva from the safe and mud from the earth. In other words, he took two natural things and turned them for supernatural purposes. How do you say that? Because little becomes much in the hands of the Lord. He takes the spit, he takes the mud. You think it's grotesque, but how many of us when we were kids they had mud pies? How many of us when we were kids spit on the ground and start playing with now all of a sudden the very things we played with as a kid uh, we now think are grotesque uh, but what you got to understand is uh, God will use some muddy stuff he'll use some things that you don't like just to get a miracle out of you uh, some folk may not like it but it ain't what you like it's up to the will of God he put it on the man's eyes now watch this he, he, he gives the process he says go to the pool of Siloam that, 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 there are some instructions in that. Jesus sends the man, watch this, to a pool called sin. You turned me off, Jalen. Jesus sends the man to a pool called sin. And when he gets sent to the pool called sin, he goes down in the water, washes his body and his eyes. He don't know what's going to happen, but he trusts the man enough to know that I ain't, I ain't got nothing to lose. I've been blind all my life. If somebody tell me to do something that's going to help me get better, the least I can do is at least try. So even if it fail, I can't be mad because I didn't try. He, he comes up and the Bible says he comes up seeing. He got sent to the pool. He went in the pool called sin. And now he sends himself to his family. Which, which, which leads me to the production of the work. This man that was blind now has his sight because he trusted God even when he didn't understand God. I'm preaching about five of y'all right now. God has told you to go back to the doctor. God has told you to try it again and you got frustrated the last time but if God telling you to do it again there's something that you can't see that God can't see. All he wants you to do is uh, 
learn how to walk by faith and not by is there anybody here that can't understand what God is doing but God if you told me to do it I got enough faith to step out on what I can't see he, he, he speaks about a personal work but, 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 but not only does he speak about a personal work, but number two, church, he has to speak among a pessimistic world. I, I gotta say it again. He, he has to speak, I'm gonna say it slow so you can take notes, among a pessimistic world. Uh, uh, where, where are you, pastor? Go down to verse number eight, because when he comes from the pool, Big Frank, he encounters three different people. Number one, he has to speak to those who are instigators. Uh, uh, where, where are you, Pastor? Uh, the word says that when he comes out, the Bible says, verse number eight, that his neighbors see him. And uh, although they see him, they don't recognize him because he don't look like the last time they saw him. Uh, the last time they saw him, he was blind and begging. But now that they see him, he's got sight and he's walking. God, help me here. And, and, and watch this, they're not talking to him, oh God. They're talking amongst themselves. Help me, Holy Ghost. And, and they're not talking to him, but they saying it loud enough for him to hear it. And they're like, ain't that the one that was on the side, blind, and begging? One of them even said, no, that ain't him. It looked like him, but that ain't him. But when you know who you are, and when you know what God has done for you, you can respond to your instigators and say, yeah, that's me, that's me. That's all of me. Would you, I, I try not to do this, but would you help me preach this and tell somebody, yeah, that's me, yeah, that's me. I used to be that way. I used to be crippled, dumb, blind, and crazy, but since I came in contact with Jesus, I am no longer, I need somebody here who can testify, yeah, that used to be me, but if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Now watch this, they, 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 they're instigating because, watch this, instead of celebrating, they trying to figure out how he got there. You do know there are some folk not in your life and mine. They can't celebrate what God has done for you because they're trying to figure out how you got it. Who gave you the down payment? You know you ain't got the credit for it. So who was your co-signer? Y'all ain't talking back to me now. Don't look at me, look at the pool. They won't know I'm talking about there. Now some folk, they can't, they, they, they won't ever get happy about your healing. They're trying to figure out how much chemo did you have to go through? How many times did you have to go to the emergency room? What, what hospital did you have to go through? But God is saying, you gotta look past your instigators and understand that everybody ain't gonna be happy about your miracle. Are they called instigators? Because unity is asking all the right questions. Instead of celebrating, they took the man to the Pharisees. Which leads me from the instigators to the investigators. The Pharisees didn't know nothing about the man. They didn't know his backstory. They didn't know who he was. But the neighbors knew. And the reason why the neighbors knew is because every time he was begging, the neighbors passed him by. Don't look now. But you got some people who passed you by 
when you couldn't see but now that you see let me tell you what it's like it's like you going to the nail shop and you know that they speak in Taiwanese and, and Vietnamese and God gives you discernment that you know that they talking about you and when you say goodbye with the tip you say it in their language She, they, they take the boy to the Pharisees and, and the Pharisees start investigating how is it that you see now watch this the miracle means nothing until one name is called and you do know the most controversial name in the world is not Farrakhan <laughs> The most controversial name in the world is not Muhammad. The most controversial name in the world is not 45. Because by the end of 2020, he gonna be gone. Muhammad can say his name. It don't mean nothing. But there's one name. That if I say that name, y'all ain't ready. If I call that name, demons are going to tremble. Matter of fact, your pew partner may get fidgety if I call that name. That's why when you go home and you call that name, people in your house start acting crazy because, watch this, if Donald Trump was to come in here, we'd all have to stand up for the president of the United States. If I, if I, if I, if the governor was to roll in here, we'd have to stand up to a sitting governor. Uh -huh. If the mayor of Baytown was to walk in here, we'd have to stand up. But if Jesus comes, We ain't got to stand, we got to bow. Because at the name, y'all ain't gonna help me here, of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. Watch this. When, 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 who God, when, when, when they heard that name, it did something to them. And a, and, a, and a comfortable situation now turns chaotic. They, 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 they can't shout off the miracle because they're worried about the state of the master. They, 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 they start saying, this man is a sinner. He, he, he's no good. He's a blasphemer. You can't shout because you close your Bible. He, he ain't none of that. And you do know folk will talk about your Jesus. But watch this. It don't matter what they say about him. Hold up. Let me change the vernacular. It ain't what you say about him. It's what you know about him. Because when, when you know what you know, it don't matter what they say. If Big Mama was here, she would say, you can't make me doubt it. Why, Mama? Because I know too much about it. The, the, they got so confused, Sister Rose Taylor, they start dividing amongst themselves. And if you really want to mess your enemies up, throw Jesus in the equation. Maybe that's why uh, uh, the Bible says your enemies will come at you one way, but they'll flee seven different ways. Why? Because if God be for you, who can be against you? But then, but then, but then, watch this. But then, watch this. Watch this. Not only what the neighbors are in this, but check this out. Here's something else you got to deal with when it comes to miracles. Everybody ain't happy for your miracle. Watch this. Watch this. Including your own family. It's in the text. Because the Pharisees subpoenaed his mom and daddy. 
why would they subpoena his parents about a grown man? Right. And the Pharisees start questioning him, you know, is this your son? You know, was he born? They say, yeah, um, yeah, but we don't know what happened. And, and, and they said, well, uh, what happened to him? They said, first of all, he's of age. He grown. Let him talk for himself. Now watch this. The, the parents should have supported their son. But because they like the status of being involved in the congregation, they, they threw their son under the bus. Because they liked to be a part of the upper echelon of the congregation. They liked to be invited to the parties at people's houses. They liked to be a part of the cliques and the crews. And so they threw their own under the bus. And don't look now. There are some folk that will crucify you just to keep their status. He's of age. Ask him for yourself. They dismissed the parents. They said, give glory to God. That's a judicial term. It literally means tell the truth. This man is a sinner. He said, no, nah, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But here's what I do know. I was blind. You can see for yourself that I can see you. That's, that, that, that's one more thing I got to deal with because you, he, he dealt with the instigators. He dealt with the investigators but now he has to deal with insanity because they were going back and forth with him not about his miracle but about the master hold up unity and this man was intelligent enough to dialogue with them even though the more intelligent he got the more ignorant they sounded. You can deal with folk in the congregation with intelligence. Because some of us want to go back to our old McNarian ways. Y'all getting sleepy on me now. You, you, you want to go back to your old east side, south side ways. But you, you want to know what, what bothers the devil is when you become spiritually intelligent. When the Holy Ghost tells you how to handle people who act like they ain't got no sense. You remember when Jesus was having a war with the devil. He didn't fight him with hood tendencies. He didn't fight him with ghetto ways. He simply said, it is written. You deal with stupid people with intelligence. I know you don't like the term stupid. But the theologian Forrest Gump says it like this. Stupid is if it walk like a duck. If it talk like a duck. Quit pacifying it and call it a chicken. got intelligent with them so much that, they're in, that his intelligence caused them to be ignorant. I'm almost done y'all. They put him out of the congregation. Now, now don't look now. There are some folk um, who've been put out because they've asked intelligent questions. And religious folk had everything but the Bible. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with asking intelligent questions. But just because they ask an intelligent question does not warrant us putting folk outside. Because first of all, this ain't our church. My old preacher would say, amen walls. Last time I checked, Jesus said, upon this rock, 
I build my head talk about him and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and yet there are some folk we didn't understand what God was doing with them so instead of celebrating them we cast them away but 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 I love that I love here's what I love about that because the last thing this man speaks to when I'm done he speaks as a perceptive worshiper he speaks as a perceptive worshiper I, I, I'm done now because when he get when he gets put out to the, the congregation uh, the gossip columnists the telephone start ringing social media start buzzing and it got back to everybody watch this including Jesus when it got back to Jesus you can't shout because you closed your Bible in verse number 35 Jesus heard that the boy had been put out of the congregation that, that, that ain't nothing new for Jesus he been put out of congregations himself and the Bible says when Jesus watch this he saw that the boy was cast out that, that, that word cast out it literally means um, to excrete from the belly into the sink uh, 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 the common term for that is vomit so in other words when they couldn't stomach the boy they threw him up can, can, can I be honest with you everybody can't handle you they can't handle God's anointing on your life they can't handle your worship they can't handle how you study they can't handle how you fast and pray they can barely handle God working on them they can't stomach when you've been with Jesus and since they can't stomach you then they throw you up but watch this even though he was vomit to the Pharisees he was valuable to Christ you can't shout because you closed your Bible. Because the Bible says, I wish I, I could do it like my pastor, but the Bible says that when Jesus found him, Nigga right. Marshall, I went too fast, let me try it again. The Bible says when Jesus found him, okay? Uh, third time the charm. When Jesus found him, what, what is that? What, oh, let me show you why I'm, why, why I'm rubbing that in like Ben Gay. Because that word find does not just mean to discover. No. It means to fall in with. Which means that no matter where you are, when Jesus finds you, he'll get in it with you. I need somebody who can testify that I, God didn't pull me out of the hell, but he got in the hell with me. He didn't pull me out of the storm, but he got in the storm. Where is there anybody here that knows he found you right where you were? He, 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 he worshiped because of a partner association. He got in the stuff with him. He says, uh, do, you, do you believe in the Son of Man? He said,